If you live near a mall, listen, then you already know about Cinnabon, right? Listen, today I'm getting ready to show you guys just how easy it is to do. Look, we're gonna copycat the Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. Super easy. Now I'm gonna bring you guys in here. You guys can pan over these ingredients. And don't forget, as always, the full ingredient list will be down in the description box below. Everything that's on my cutting board right now is what we need right now to get our dough, right? So listen, I've already put this in the microwave and heated this up. I use my, th my uh, thermometer. We want this to be about 105 to about 115 degrees, right? Super simple, but you gotta have one of these. This is important because we're dealing with yeast, right? So I got some yeast. If we want to activate this, I got my temperature. It's right. Let me go ahead and open this up. We'll put this in here just like that. When you do it properly, it'll start to froth. Now that we got that working right, we got the yeast activating, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take butter, sugar, salt, and my eggs. I'm gonna add that to, the, to my mixer. Now we'll just go ahead and get this mixed. It's been five minutes, right? I want you guys to take a look at my yeast right here. My yeast and my milk. You can see that top right there. I hope you guys can see it. Look, if it's not frothy like that on the top, you gotta start all over. That's real critical when you're you know, working with, especially when you're doing some baking, right? Because look, that right there tells me the yeast has been activated and that's gonna help everything rise. Now, that's already ready. Now we're gonna move over to our flour. When you come over here to the mixer, those of you guys that have like a uh, kitchen egg mixer now, or any type of mixer, now's the time you want to go ahead and after you finish mixing that up, you see I changed this, now I got my, my dough hook on there, right? And then if you got the kitchen egg, you know, it got something, an attachment like this to put on the top. I always start everything off on like low setting, right? We just add a little bit in at a time, right? Remember, that's the key with everything. No matter what you're doing, just a little bit in increments and you let it work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up just a little bit. Now I'm getting ready to go ahead and add my milk in. What I'm doing is, I want you guys to see just how it works, especially when using this, you know, dough hook. But if you just let it work on its own, look at that. You see, I didn't go in there and hit it with no spatula or nothing on the sides. Look at that right there. And that's what we want to have, folks. Now, you guys saw this bowl that was sitting off here on the side, right? What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a little pan. I'm just gonna spray it real light. That's enough. That's it right there. We just don't want the dough to stick. I can probably put a little bit of this on my hand. Let's do that. You know what I mean? Just, just a little bit, just so that the dough doesn't, you know, stick to my hand, right? So we're gonna go in here. Let's go in here and get this. I want all my dough. It's already mixed. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna drop it right here in the middle, just like this. What I'm looking for this to do is to double in size. That's key, folks. You know what I mean? So it's got to do that. So now I'm gonna put this over here like this. Now, check this out. We're gonna speed the process up, because listen, our mouths are watering. We know what we're making. You know what I mean? So we wanna hurry up and, you know, get it, right? What I did was I took my oven. Check this out, just a little pro tip. I set it for 200 degrees, right? Once it got up to 200 degrees, I just turned it off. We just wanna have that warm environment to let this yeast do its work on this dough. And I'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, so look, everything done proof, swole up, whatever you, you wanna call it, it did it. Here it is right here, look, I touch it, look. It's nice, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here. We wanna go ahead and just get this done. This is the brown sugar, and this is our cinnamon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just give it a little mix. Remember, everything in increments, folks. Even when you start smelling it, it's gonna start coming together for you, and you're gonna be like, oh, okay, now I got it. That smell that I smell on the cinnamon rolls, it's really just a brown sugar. You're gonna smell some of that butter and it's gonna be a whole lot of cinnamon. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below how many people gonna make this. You know what, I like things like this, uh, cooks like this, bakes like this. Reason being, it's great to like put you and your loved ones in there, including kids, you know, you can, anybody, your loved one, whether it's your friend or not, it's just a good activity, brings everybody together and yada, yada, yada. I can't really show my my good side, I might lose my hood card, y'all. All right, so look, we got that mixed up. This is cool, right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get some flour. Follow me, folks, because I know a lot of us ain't bakers. I might not be no baker myself, but I attempt it. I do it a little bit. Look, you just want to go ahead, you know, and put a little bit of this flour down on your surface. Why? Because you don't want nothing to stick, right? So we'll just do like this. Look, got a little bit of the flour on my hand. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this out of the bowl. Now we're just gonna go ahead and drop this down just like this. It depends on how long you leave it, you know, sitting up, right? 
If you leave it up, I let mine sit up for about an hour and something. You, it'll get, the only way I can describe it is like a little bit like on the crunchy side. You can see it right there. I hope you guys can see it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work it in a little bit, you know, like this. Makes it moist again with the rest. Just do a couple of folds, maybe 16 inches wide, 12 in depth, in depth, right? So we'll just start rolling it back and forth like this. Listen, you want it to be about a quarter of an inch. For me, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit more of a perfectionist, but I like to start off with a nice rectangle. This is cool enough for me right now, but you don't want them to be too thin, you just want it to be a quarter of an inch thick, you know, throughout. We got a little rectangle shape. We got our butter. Remember, the butter is supposed to be at room temperature. Why? You should be able to do this with butter, even with a, you know, a silicone or a rubber spatula, right? You just want to get yourself some butter. And what we're going to do is we're just going to spread this all over here. But you guys can see just how this is a great exercise, great family cook, friend cook, significant other cook. You know, just these are just great projects to make. You know, I mean, not to mention that it tastes so good too. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my cinnamon and brown sugar. You guys got it now. This is the way it's gonna work. But look, we're just gonna take it like this, and we're just gonna fill this whole thing up with all of this goodness. Now, if this don't smell like a cinnamon roll once you start doing this, you tell me. If it don't, I wanna go ahead and book a doctor appointment for you because something ain't right. Now, it's up to you. Whatever makes you guys comfortable. Some of you guys are gonna wanna roll it back this way, and some of us gonna go this way. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and start it on this side. Just wanna make sure you got enough flour down there on the bottom, right? So that nothing sticks. So now we're just gonna take it, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start rolling it, just like this. And I want you guys to notice, I started with the long side, right? This way you'll get more of them. And the objective is for it to all be about the same size. If you did everything and it stayed a quarter of an inch thick, and as you roll it, this is what you'll come up with. Now you guys know, if you roll them thin, have you ever seen the mini Cinnabons? I know it's all starting to come into play right now, ain't it folks? And that there folks, is a masterpiece. Might not look like it right now, but trust me when I tell you that. This is a trick, I'm gonna show you this. If I was to take my knife and cut this down, this is soft, right? Just to give you an idea. If we did them, cut them down like that, you kinda like force them down and you bend them, and then they'll come tight, then you gotta mess with them, right? We're gonna go ahead and get ourselves some dental floss. I'm gonna suggest you guys do not get yourself no dental floss. Get the plain kind. You don't wanna use nothing that have no minty, minty taste to it, right? So we just put this in here like that. We just bring this around and then you cut them the easiest, you know, as thick as you would like to be. This right here is about the easiest way to do it. Now, I wanna let you guys know this right here. I'm gonna be making mine in this cast iron skillet. You guys can use a 13 by nine, whatever type of oven safe dish that you have that you can put in there, you can do it. But I want you guys to just get a visual before I even do that. Listen to this, cast iron, we got cinnamon roll. Think about the colors and then we gonna hit it with that icing too. At the end, you wanna talk about presentation, this is it. For me, about an inch and a half, inch and three quarter, that's good. We just put it like that and look at this right here. Boom. What I did was, look, I went ahead and sprayed my cast iron because look, we don't want nothing to stick, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and set this right there in the center. And all we gonna do is we're gonna take this, get this back to the same, you know, we want them to all be the same size, right? Then we just bring it here like this and we'll go boom. Now, remember earlier I talked about doing like a little pro tip. If you guys want them to rise, you can take your thumb, you know what I mean? Just kind of like push it up like that, give it a little, something like that. We just giving it a little head start, right? Because it's gonna rise. But when we put it in the oven, this is gonna rise up anyway. Just that little bit, don't put too much. I done made that mistake before, trying to be, be way out with it, trying to show somebody something. And then when I did it, all of this had come up like that and the gravity took over and it fell over to the side. Okay, look, so it's been 30 minutes, right? So if you can look at them, you can see they starting to swell up a little bit more. Look, because I rolled them with the pin, after you do that and then you roll them all up and you tie them and twist them and do all of that, they kind of like get a little bit of thin, but after that 30 minutes, you can see. Now just imagine if this was in a 10 inch, it'd be nice and tight. Everything would be nice and tight and swell together, right? I'm at 350 degrees. I'm gonna put these in there for 20 minutes, right? 10 minutes, you know, until they're done, that's when we're gonna make this cream cheese, you know, ice cream. Okay, so look, just put those back in the oven, right? 
Those are going. You already you heard me say we set a timer for 20 minutes. We've got 10 minutes left to go. Now is the time to make the icing. And what we're doing is we coordinating it so that, that when the icing is finished, those will come out, they'll be nice and hot, and then we hit them over the top. Everything just kind of like glazes it and falls down on the side. Now, we're gonna do it just like this. All of the rest of these ingredients you see right here gotta go in here, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it just like this. And then we're gonna come with the butter. Remember, room temperature is key, folks. Salt. Trust the process. I know some of y'all thinking right now, like, why do I wanna put salt in there? You gotta put it in there. It's just, hey, trust me. And now for our cream cheese. We start off slow, always. I want you guys to take a look inside of there right now. This is ready. And my timer just went off, you know, for these rolls. I need to go ahead and take those off. And there you have it, folks. Look at that right there. Ooh-wee. Everything has been baked. Everything has like filled out nicely. Now here's where it gets tricky. You want to do this when it's hot. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and we're just going to start adding this on top. You know, it's gonna be a little tricky in the beginning. We're gonna let that heat, let everything melt. Cause remember, this is really got a whole lot of butter, folks. You see how it goes on a little stiff, right? Remember, this is a buttercream. So now it's real pliable and easy to just put it on. The hardest part is just getting it on, you know, getting it on your uh, rolls and letting the heat, you know, get it to melt. But once it starts to melt and get nice and soft, this is what you come up with. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below how many of y'all gonna make this, especially, you know, my guys out there. Listen, we gotta do it, folks. I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Remember, it got a little heat, residual heat. We just wanna stand there and watch it. Probably put it in there for maybe 120 seconds. Then after that, we want this to come down, and I'm gonna get a thumbnail, and then check it out, folks, we're finna eat. Now, again, now that I set, set that in there, you guys can just see, I'm able to wipe this, so now you can start seeing the cinnamon, you know, and the swirl action, right? For those of you guys that wanna put some more, you know, of this uh, icing on there, you can. But look at this right here. This is a presentation for you, folks. You see that right there, folks? If you guys know me, I talk about when I do my sweets, how I get down, I like to get down with a tall, ice cold glass of milk, and it's got to have ice in it. When I say ice cold, that's exactly what I mean. And I can't wait. Oh, if that ain't store bought, me Cinnabon, copycat, I don't know what's happening. Hey, listen, I'm not finna over talk you, folks. Hey, check this out, folks. Cheers. Ooh, it's hot. Ain't no whole lot of that I gotta say. You know what? Truly, the picture or the video speaks for itself. You guys seen it, how can it be wrong? Look, we got the, the doughy, the doughy goodness, right? You seen all the butter, all of that. Then you see we put the, we layered it. We put the cinnamon and the brown sugar on there. Then you know, everybody know buttercream ice cream. I mean, uh, icing, so what else is there to be said? Your brain already told you, told you that this is a uh, fire. Hey, when I tell you that, trust the process, put it in your blender, let everything work. Trust the oven, it's all in the yeast though, folks. Remember, you gotta like, make sure you got a meat thermometer so that you can check your uh, your temperature of your milk. Once you got that froth, you know you're gonna have some success. Now, with that being said, listen, I'ma hurry up and rush out of here. Reason being, cause listen, I wanna enjoy a couple of more of these myself, right? This is gonna, we gonna call this my cheat day. Hey, so with that being said, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell everybody out here. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. With that being said, folks, I'm about to distribute, and guess what, folks? I'm out. Peace.